They want you locked in your home without God and alone. Don't want you looking up Dr. Sebi and Robert Malone. The truth blocked on your phones. They call the shots from they throne. These politicians and these doctors, they are not in control. Jimmy. We don't care what they say. It's God over the government. Won't have it any other way. It's God over the government. And we just don't. Hey, um, I saw this on Instagram, I, and I'm sorry I'm late. It's no longer Thanksgiving, but I just wanted why, to how stop did, by. How did you come across that? I, it was I. Somebody pointed it to me. I'd heard about this guy High Res, All and right. they said, <laughs> "I know who you are. Come on in, Robert. This is your wife. This is Jill Malone. Jill. Good Dr. to meet Jill you guys. Malone. Come on in. Come on in. Thanks. Better late than never. Let's go, <laughs> Mr. Hey. Malone, Jimmy, Jimmy, Good Robert you, Malone. Jill. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. So I'm genuinely curious, how did you come across my social media? I, I, somebody wrote me a text and they said, you gotta look at this thing that's on Instagram. I'm not in Instagram. And then I see this thing about Robert Malone from this rapper I've never Was heard I the of. first rap artist ever to <laughs> mention <Totally. him? laughs> Let's go. So how did you hear about me? Um, initially it was the Dark Horse podcast. Cool. And then I did my due diligence and I was like, okay, you know, this guy's not just you know, some talking head, you know, and, and obviously to have gotten to that point of Weinstein, Kirsch and, 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 and Malone, I had to be willing to want to dive down the rabbit hole of information because you weren't, you know, handed to people on a platter. You weren't handed to me on a platter on the internet with the censorship and all that. But, um, and that's why I made that post. It wasn't a left or right thing. It wasn't a political, meant to be a political thing, maybe so, socio-political, right? It was like, it was like kind of your level, in my mind, your level of willingness to search for information, if you knew Robert Malone six months ago, a year ago, then you were willing to, you know, not take that first answer as Bible, as definitive, you know. So that was that was what that post was about. So thanks. Yeah, thank thanks. you for coming. I'm honored. Thank you for coming. So Jim, I'm so grateful that you came out to Maui for that rally. That was totally impromptu, and you then see? I was blown away when I flew over to Oahu for the uh, second rally, and there you were again doing your thing. I I was like. This is really cool. Yes, it felt sir. it felt for me like I was less isolated. I had right. I had somebody else that had come over from the mainland that that was participating in this, and it was just and the crowd was totally into it. No. On both of them, they were amazing. I mean, the the Maui crowd it was like two or three thousand people, wow. and the, yeah. the whole population of Maui is like a hundred thousand. Wow. Yeah. Um, big fraction, and they yeah, came like, out, and they were like totally into it, and and he was totally cash. It was it was set up on a flatbed pickup truck. Yeah. And and because there's a whole backstory about permitting and all right. this kind and of stuff. You performed on a pickup truck. You? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were standing on the bed of a. It pickup? was a pickup truck, and then the backgrounds were mountain, like the, right, these amazing. special mountains, um, where there was a war, and there's ghosts from the right, right, right. soldiers there, and then clouds like going through, wow. which was like crazy. Yeah, it was it was kind of surreal a little bit. It was one of those weird moments in time. You know, we were a bunch of geek doctors, right? That were there. Or it's what? all Jill and myself. So how, how much time does it consume of your brain? When we were doing Twitter, because... The, <laughs> when the, we used to be doing Twitter. Yeah, back in the day, <laughs> in the Twitter um, when I had a Twitter account, yeah. um, and now it's the same with LinkedIn, I've tried really hard to make it, and, and Jill has also, to make it so that people have access to information. Right. In a time in which everything is censored and spun and, and propagandized yeah. mm -hmm. and everything. My whole goal has been to just, if you can help people get access to the information and give them the tools to help them think it through themselves, you don't have to tell them what to think. Right. You shouldn't tell them right, what right, to right. think. You should let them think for themselves. Right, lead them to the water. Yeah, exactly. What's, what I really love about social media for me, and maybe for you guys also, is um, for me, it's constant feedback. Right, right. Real-time feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put something yeah. out, and, and good, bad, and ugly, right. it's coming right back at right. you, right? right. And, and, um, and you learn from that. Right. You learn a ton from all those people. It's not just you helping them learn. You're learning back from them. And um, I, that's the, the biggest loss with Twitter in, in having been deleted right. is that I built this community of, 
of, it was like 520,000 yeah. at the end. It's not huge, but right. they were throttling me the whole time. Uh -huh. What that does, it cuts all the trolls out. Right. Okay. Not to pay. Which not is to really pay. cool. That's great. Right? And so now with Substack, We've got this really interactive yeah. group check it out. that is busy commenting all the time on whatever we put out, but it goes out right now. We're at a hundred thousand. Cool. Okay. So or, yeah, it, it bumped. I mean, that, that was the odd thing about Twitter. Right. I have a question for both of you guys. What was the first thing in recent times that just looked really wrong that made you be willing to, you know, say kind of what I was saying earlier, you know, where I'm like, okay, this is it. This is, this is the last straw. I don't care if I lose fans, I don't care if I lose money, I don't care if I lose brand deals, I don't care if I lose my sanity, you know, card. What was the So the, you go, Jim. What was the what was the, the last straw? Cuz I know you've always been intuitive, you've been deep think a deep thinker, but what was the thing? Um I think seeing the other artists that I knew in Hollywood and just in the industry in general promote medicine out of nowhere. Right. That became a trend all of a sudden. Felt like payola, right? Felt paid. Right, and they're pushing their audiences to make a decision, not even to make a decision, to just make one a one-sided right, right. decision on their own body. And um, then getting emails from companies like the NAACP to be an influencer for the shot. And I just, I was like, it made no sense, like, why these major I got companies and corporations. Too, same thing. It was like. Know. So did you know that they were all getting paid to do that? I had a feeling, right. you know, and then once I started getting all the emails, they also show you a list of what other celebrities part of it, to encourage you, right, are being paid to, you know, and all these influencers, most of them, they don't know what they're doing because right. it's the, the influencer, the artists do, they know hundred percent what they're doing. The influencer side are more young kids yeah. and these companies see that they're hungry for whatever quick 10,000, 30,000 and they'll just post like, even if they don't do it to them or take it themselves, they'll still post to promote it. And that's what's so crazy. So, yeah. And then there's the fact checkers. And then there's oh, yeah. fact checkers. Yeah. So for me, um, it was kind of like a stepwise. People talk about being red pilled. Right, right. Yeah. I was aware of a lot of what was going on, and me and buddies at the FDA that were outside the review branch mm -hmm. were chatting on a weekly basis. Yeah. We'd have a Zoom call. And we were talking about things that weren't making sense, like how the government was reacting about ivermectin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I already had this kind of like, oh, this is the usual gaming. You know, this is like outbreak five or six for me. Right, I'm, right. I'm just like, I'm not another one. Um, <laughs> and, and I thought this is going to be the usual kind of stupid that I'm used to seeing. In and out, yeah. Steve Kirsch and I flew out to Brett's um, studio in Portland. And we all sat down and all three of us knew that we were about to do something. Yeah. It was going to change our lives. Right. Brett's got a really good understanding of media, mm -hmm. and uh, and he and he said to us, "Okay, you got anything in your background? Because they're going to pull it out." And I'm like, "I've been married for years, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm, uh, this is what I do for a living." Right. Uh, and and um, he said, "You know, they're they're going to attack you," and I'm just like, "Okay, but we have to do this." Yeah. Brett knew that he was at risk for losing his um, his whole. Uh, revenue from his family Everything. thing that supports his family if youtube deplatformed him which they did yeah um steve was the one because he's a high-tech entrepreneur he the mouse, so, yeah. yeah so steve was more chill in the end steve lost his company really he had to resign wow. because he was identified as an anti-vaxxer okay and nothing he said right, could, right. could change Poorly, that okay right. once they say that it's over yeah. they, you're that's you know, the new you're, cancel culture. That's, right, that right. is totally cancel yeah. culture yeah. Right? Maybe out of the three of us, I came away with the best. I mean, it, there, was, there was this whole, there was a lot of buzz about me and the Nobel Prize at the time. Right, and right, I right. said to him, you know, this is what's at risk potentially, but so what? We have to do the right thing. Yeah. So there was that moment. Um, but then, then not too long after that, I was on this teleconference with this Canadian physician, a primary care doc giving out early treatment. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we went on until midnight on Saturday night, you know, on this chat with this yeah. guy. And he's telling me about what's going on in Canada. And he's telling me about how he files these adverse events reports about yeah, the, yeah. Very, about yeah, the yeah. vaccines. Mm -hmm. And they just blow him off. Of course. And he talks about the cases and he talks about what he's seeing. You know, this is way back. Yeah. And, and, and he's, he's basically asking me, because I got all this depth with working with the government and yeah, regulatory yeah. affairs, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And he's, and he's saying, Robert, what can I do? And I'm like, 
I don't know what to say because I'm not Canadian. I don't know the Canadian right, right. system. I don't know how I can help you. I'd love to help you. I wish I could help you. Yeah. It's it's sick what's going on. You know, they're they're at the time they were talking about free ice cream to give jabs for kids. Mm. You know, and all that stuff. Okay, and I'm just like, this is sick. Yeah. Um. And uh, but I I was just like, I can't help you. I don't know what to say. Yeah. And I went to bed and I woke up in the morning and it was like, bing. And, and, and I turned over to Jill and I said, because Jill and I both took a ton of bioethics training. Right. And I said, I know what we can do to help these guys. Yeah. We can put out a, a piece. We put it out in trial site news mm -hmm. in which we discuss the bioethics of what's going on and cite the Nuremberg Code and the yep, Helsinki yep, Accord yep. and the yeah, Belmont yeah. Report and the Common Rule. Yeah. And so I wrote that piece and put it out. And that, I think, was the biggest turning point of all of right. this is because it was, a, it, I mean, getting not to overuse red pill, yeah. but it was it was a conscious, intentional red pill mm -hmm. document. That's great. Because I knew that anybody that read that, whether they were pro-vaccine or anti-vaccine yep. or left or right, right or right. whatever the heck they were, they could understand bioethics and that it's not right to force somebody to yep. take something that's an unlicensed product. Uh -huh. And that is exactly what it did. And it seemed to congeal. A lot of people had this free, this sense of things aren't right. Right. But I don't quite know what it is. Yeah. And and that one was a trigger. And then everything has just gone ever since. So yeah. in answer your question, yeah, yeah. you'll be writing that op-ed. That was Joe. you knew this was that was the stand. Oh, you knew yeah. something was gonna go down. But this guy Matthias Desmet in Ghent, he's an academic, yeah. PhD. Um uh Re had an epiphany, um, you know, mid twenty twenty, that this is what's going on. Right. And and uh, so I'd spoken about it. I carefully watched his videos and learned from him. And then two days ago, I had a chance to be on a podcast with, together with Peter McCullough. Right. Just popped out of the blue, a guy that I'd done a podcast before. And um, he said, "Hey, I've lined these guys up. Will you get on?" So I jumped on. And it was a great chance for me to kind of get schooled uh, by the master. And um, so what Matthias suggests is that um, it's baked and, um, and the whole world is caught up. In it. He and his colleagues don't think we can stop it. What he said, and this is kind of pretty heavy, the dissenters ha must keep dissenting. Not because they're going to turn it around right. or stop it, but because that is the only thing that will keep everybody from going even deeper into yeah, yeah. it. Yep. Okay. But, he said, if there is any violence in what you say or what is done, We've learned that in social media. they will attack you. Mm. Yep. Okay. They will attack you physically. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this is, you know, what led to Stalin's purges. Yep. It's yep. what led to the guillotine. Right. Um, under the Jacobins and the French Revolution, it's the process that led to um, the concentration camps, yep. et cetera, et cetera. Okay, yep. we're playing with fire. Correct. We have to be really careful not to provoke them. Right. There, there's a whole school of thought that that we need to fight. Right. You know, right. Arr, we have to do this thing. Right. Okay. The thing is, if we do that, there is a lot of them, and they got a lot more money than we do. Right. We got to be totally smart, but we. What came out of this podcast with Matthias, um, that's kind of profound and deep, um, is that we have no choice now that we've started. Correct, yeah. And, and that we're in the moment and we're identified as the leaders. If we step back, if we weenie out, then the rest of the world is gonna get even deeper yeah. into it. And we're gonna yeah. have even more bad crazy. Right. right. Um, and that is basically what he said the best we can hope for. Mm -hmm is to keep, keep, do our best to keep everybody from going even deeper into yeah. it. What's the, what's the play at hand? Like you said, like thinking, you know, you, you can't be violent. You can't be, you know, fire, fight fire with fire. So what, in your opinion, is the... So what he taught, so I'm just going off, I mean, yeah. this is not my discipline, Correct. right? I'm this a molecular what virologist. Right. I'm not a psychoanalyst. What, okay. have, what have you learned? So, but this is, so this is what Matthias said was, um, you, the dissenters must continue to dissent. Right. Absolutely must. Um, we we are locked in on this thing. We got to walk this road together. 
I mean, we're, we're on this path and there's no turning back. You know, what I said to him was, so what you're teaching to me is that ethically and morally. You guys hungry? You guys hungry? Absolutely. I got some food, I got some food. Cool. Dude, dude, dude not, it's not, not GMO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Thank you. That, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I have a question. So we were talking about like the battle and like yeah. that we're in right now. Do you see this as a spiritual war too? It is. Yeah. And, and you know, like what do you know, or I don't know how much you know about Hollywood and their play in this entire situation. So that's an interesting thing. Um, actually know a lot. I, I got contacted through Byron Bridal by a Sony Pictures star that I'm not going to name. Okay. Um, that didn't want to take the vaccine. And uh, and he wanted uh, Dark Bridal and I to speak to uh, his the uh, film company. Right on his behalf. Which is a major major studio, and I'm not going right. to embarrass them. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so we had this Zoom call uh, with the star about eight different people from the studio. And they were high level people. Mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, <laughs> this, is, this is a little insane. First time you've ever done <laughs> okay. right? You know, this is, this is big, yeah. big media. Right, right. Um, and uh, about one of the biggest right. internationally, right. okay? And, and they get on and he's saying, I don't want to take the jab. And they're saying, then we can't shoot. Right. What I learned was that the studio, and this is a huge studio, had their hands tied by the union. And the position of the studio was that they don't have any choice. Mm -hmm. The union insists that, rules, they, yeah. that everybody be vaccinated. Right. And, it, and it, we talked about natural immunity and blah, blah, blah. Of course. They didn't care. Of course. They, they didn't have the option to care. Yeah. Because they couldn't go up against the, the union. union. Right. But I've heard this as a trend. Yeah. In in um, that in SoCal, uh, that there's a bunch of folks in the industry that that don't buy in, mm -hmm. like with the rest of the country. Right. Well, is it is it forty percent? Is it sixty percent? Right. Same with the industry, and they don't like it very much that they're being told they have to do this of when course. they don't want to do it. Right. Um, and they're talking about starting new studios. Have you seen the videos of um, like pentatonics and? Um, the vaccine, you know, Jimmy Kimmel, right? Like did dancing. Pentatonics do a vaccine. Pentatonics video? did a whole thing. I am thing. so disappointed. Yeah, they yeah. did a whole thing in the White House. I love Pentatonics. So do I. So do they. That's what but, I listen to. Like, oh, they're they're awesome. And I want to they're stamp awesome. this. I want to stamp this here. I'm not mad that somebody it cares to use their creativity in whatever way they choose, but it just feels like we talked about earlier. So inorganic it feels so inauthentic it feels like payola which is back in the day the record labels you know it was all it was all and we paid. know it and we you, and we know that you're right the government has not been shy they had a right. whole campaign to try to recruit influencers yeah and pay them yeah. to put this stuff out but the one the clips i've seen are just cheesy it's so cheesy you know dancing down the street like it's a broadway production i you know my my reaction when i saw these I was just like, oh, what are these guys going to think about themselves right. two years from now? Right. You know, when, I hope that when that, the dust settles. That's a wishful thinking because I feel like some people in two years, that's not enough. That's not enough time for people to like wrap their heads around. Like once it, I'm, I'm an artist. So if you do something that I disagree with, if it's done well, I'm excited because I'm an artist. I love art that's just executed well. And okay. if it's not executed well and it just feels so scripted and forced, I just get so frustrated. Even if I agree with it, even if it's something that I like, I'm just like, this is so... Oh, you know, it's, it just irks me. And those are one of those things. Jimmy has a whole different approach because Jimmy, Jimmy's, Jimmy was in the belly of the beast of Hollywood more than me, you know? So you correct know. me if I'm wrong, Omicron is, is the, there's the least deaths from Omicron versus... Uh, yeah, so you're on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dark winter. <laughs> yeah. Which winter? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the good news. You yeah. just hit it on the head. And that's what's breaking their whole narrative. Yeah. Well, in, in, science is breaking the I mean, science. If, yeah. if, well, it's, not, it's not science that's doing it. I mean, it, in your belief system, right? There's a deeper spirit. Right. right. Um, if that's the case, Omicron looks like a gift. I've right. said this a couple times, and I said it on Fox News, and everybody's like, "Woo, that's pretty. You know, oh, that's pretty far out. Malone's gone crazy again. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then and then 
Ingram handed me on the other day, and she's her lead for that was she played that clip mm -hmm. of me saying, "Hey, this looks like good news." Right. And and she's and then she leads in and she says, "A bunch of my friends when they heard that, they were really shocked." Of course. And and uh, and then and then she just hammers the data. She says infections are up three hundred percent, and hospitalizations are down three percent. Right. And Malone called it. I'm like, thank you, Laura. <laughs> Let me give you a hug, right? right. Uh, likewise, Bannon. You know, I've been on Bannon uh, because I've been banned on so many course, other things. So I started. I, Bannon's like a buddy now. Right, right. right. You know, Beck was. Um, you know, who would have thought I'd ever be on Glenn Beck? Yeah, show, yeah, okay? yeah. And early on, I was on Beck for like four days in a row or uh -huh. something, something crazy. Speaking, okay. I have a question about that in general. What's your opinion on the fact that? I mean, I don't know your pol politics initially before anything, but why, why do you see more conservative media giving you a platform versus more liberal media? Why, in your, so that's, why? A deep, that's a deep question. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's this saying, follow the money. Of course, mm -hmm. I know it. There's a book that I know it all. Yep. Follow yeah. the money, yep. right? Um, to get to truth. Of course. And for me, this has been one of those reveal things that's happened mm -hmm. over time. I'm going to say, I had somebody come to the farm months and months ago. And they were just shooting off about the Great Reset and the World Economic Forum right. and, and all the conspiracy and these guys are evil right, right. And, and all this stuff and, and um, that he's a pure blood and he hasn't right. taken all this, mm. all this thing. It's the first time I'd run into it. And I was like, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to help these, do everything I can to help these yeah. guys. But I think they've gone off the deep end a little it bit. It felt strange to you at first. And, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then over time, you see this stuff. You experience it. That's funny. You read up about it. You see the stuff like I posted the other day on Getter. Yeah. And and this is one of the things I posted right before I was killed by Twitter, mm -hmm. was this link to the World Economic Forum, and they have like a mind map of all their strategies and mm -hmm. how they all interact. Right. And what their positions are, and everybody that's part of the World Economic yep. Forum is supposed to follow this centralized right. script. Right. And it's just like, whoa, there it is. <laughs> you know, it's right in your face. Yeah. And so. Well, let me put it another way. At the very end of the, the full-length Brett Weinstein podcast, yeah. Brett, Brett starts off talking about uh, Elon Musk yeah, course, and, and, and says, you know, save us from ourselves, basically, right? And spend some money and fix the world so. kind of thing, right? Right before that, he talks about that, that why question. How is this happening? Right. And, and we were all sitting there, the three of us, kind of doing a head scratch. Um, and... And talking about emergent phenomena and stuff like that. Since then, I learned about the Trusted News Initiative. Yep, yep. And then, then I started reading and observing and learning, because this is outside my field. And, and, and I'd, I'd done some political science when I was young, you know, like decades ago in the early 80s. Um, and I'd read about the New World Order and transnationalism. And I thought, oh, that's, that's never. And then, and then I start looking into this, and I realize that there's only about four large investment funds in the world, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and they own all these other they control. They don't completely own them, but they own enough um, that they're able to control all these other companies. Yeah. And it's better to think about each of these companies, Pfizer and the Washington Post yeah, yeah, yeah. and the New York Times mm -hmm. and yep. you know major media, major tech, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, big pharma, as all divisions of one company, umbrella, which is rock, why, whatever, which yep. is why they all act in a coordinated right. fashion, because yep. mm -hmm. they're all divisions of uh -huh. each other. The yep. first reveal was um, when, you know, Thomson Reuters did one of the fact checker yeah, yeah, attacks yeah. Uh -huh. early on. They said no, Spike is not a toxin. I'm like, it is a toxin. Okay, it's and they're in the literature. Okay, right, right. yeah, um, but it doesn't matter, right? That's so they did this, and I was a little bit pissed off. So I started looking at Thomson Reuters, and I found that this guy who was chairman of the board at Thomson Reuters is also on the board of Pfizer. Of course. And we that was it. the first time when we went, oh. We saw, it. We saw it. there was memes. Memes no. is how we get the information. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're, then we make sure. You're not in but Kansas anymore. Right, you know? right. We saw a lot of conflict, <laughs> conflicting interests. So I put out this little, you know, it's the equivalent of a meme. It's a little less than four minute uh, talk, right. video clip, where I talk to parents and I say, hey, you got to think twice before you get your kids vaccinated mm -hmm. because if they do have one of these adverse events, it's for life. You're right. going to have to live with it, and so are they. That's the short version of it. Mm -hmm. right. It goes insanely viral. Um, and, and I get all of this uh, blowback about it. Of course. And um, 
there's in among them is a BlackRock owned uh, TV yeah. station in Spain Strange. that is just going off on me, you know, and and so, so you see this again and again and again, uh, where the media is controlled. They use the same words. Another one was when we went to Italy, and so all these things that I'm moving around in the world and talking to people, you realize all this messaging is coordinated, mm -hmm. and so when you ask about the media and what's going on and why do they do this. Because it's all one company, right? Owned and all the messaging is all wrapped it's around. It's actually very simple, right? We, we complicate, yeah. we overcomplicate these things. Yeah, we so, don't have to come to a deep conspiracy right. theory. That's why people are like, "Oh, how you know they're all attacking you? They're saying all this nasty stuff about you," and I'm like, "So what? Yeah. Of course they are." You know, they deplatformed you from Twitter. Of course they did. Yeah. Uh, I can't post anything on Facebook. I'm like. What are you crazy? <laughs> Why are you posting anything on Facebook? Yeah. Right. Facebook's totally owned. So for me, it, I just it's just water off my back. Why is it so important um, in in your for you specifically that for children like to speak out about against you know children with vaccinations with mandates? Is there a duality there as far as like you said if they if there's some adverse reaction that's forever? Is there also some truth in not a scientist, not a doctor in you know, their strong immune systems playing a role in weakening the virus or just something, if it runs through their bodies, there's some sort of scenario. So there's where we... two, there's, there's, the, there's the scientific arguments that are more techie. And then there's the kind of the emotional um, of course. argument. Um, so I, uh, I don't know about you guys, I'm a father and a grandfather. Um, and I'm near the end of my life. You know, on a good day, I got another 20. A bad day, it could be tomorrow. All right? Um, I think it's a good thing, by the way, to kind of live with death on your shoulder. Yeah, yeah. You got to respect you it. You got to respect it. got to respect death. Bobby Kennedy really laid this out. You know, there, his statement, I don't think this is quite right, but his statement is, there's never been a time in the world in which the old ask the young to make sacrifices anything, right? with their health right. and their lives. So that's save that's the emotional one, right? Correct? Yeah, and it's deeper than that. Um, for me, I'm at a stage where I've done, you know, Live the stuff life. I've done, I don't have to prove myself. Right. Okay? Um, I And I'd be perfectly happy to just hang on the farm right. and raise our horses and take care of my wife and live out the rest of my life. Um, but this thing has happened, and like we talked about, I kind of have to, that's, I started on the road, and I kind of got to keep going again, weaning out. But um, but the kids are a different thing. Of course, they they're not in a position where they can make decisions. We're we have the responsibility to protect them, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's you know when I'm talking about the sacred, that right. is a mm -hmm. sacred thing. Right. Um, and uh, no matter where you come from, what you believe in, if we don't if we don't value our children. Um, then civilization is going to right. go straight to hell right. in yeah. every dimension, right? Of course. Right. Um, so, so early on, I knew that uh, this was this this was going to be a battle. The big battle couldn't be won. Yeah. It already it had already gone too far. And so, I'm kind of of the school. You got to pick your battles. Right. And the one that I thought maybe we could win on is stopping the mandated vaccines. So early on, I made a decision that the, the hill I would die on is, that no is, is, is protecting the children. Now there's one other thing that has kind of evolved over time, and that's the right to free speech. And that I didn't expect. I didn't expect this level of censorship right. and propaganda. Really? So that's, you ask why the kids, and. Yeah, we can talk about Gert von den Bosch and that the kids are the reservoir so that we won't evolve, right, right, right. escape mutants and da-da-da, right, right. and, the, and their thymus and the blah, 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 all that yeah. stuff. But all that techie, science-y, SPAC-based stuff yeah. um, is secondary to that deep emotional right. that responsibility. Makes that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, knowing what you know about mRNA, I imagine you know some things about it. 
um, what's the difference you know, in this vaccine versus, because people always love to argue with us right. and you, they say, um, it's, it's always been mandated. It's always been rebel of mumps. Yeah. Okay. So that argument, please. I, Cause I've never yeah, heard of so that started. argument, but they've been around for so long. Um, we know what they're good for and what they're not good for and how, you know, what the long-term consequences yeah. are. And so when, when mom or dad make a decision or a pediatrician, makes a decision to say, hey, you should get your kid jabbed with this thing. Right. For those core vaccines, those are licensed medical products that are use established technology that have been around for a long time. Okay. These are not licensed products. They're using novel technology that's hardly been tested at right. all. Um, we don't know what the long-term adverse events are because there's not been enough time. I mean, right. you don't have to be a rocket right, scientist, right. they say, to figure out that we don't have five years of safety data yeah. on these things. Okay, so this argument that, oh, these are just the same yeah. and we should treat them the same, no. So I spoke about this on Great Britain News with this interesting character called Neil Oliver. Mm -hmm. This right. guy is authentic. Right. So he has me on in kind of a meet the press environment with some other journalists from the UK. And I speak the truth about the children and the jabs and the risks and all that kind of stuff. And, and they were, the journalists were like, because well, none of this is people, people can't talk about this Taboo, in the UK yeah. at all. Mm. Okay. And then, and then one of them starts saying, well, actually this committee that we had here in the UK had said something very similar things, blah, 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 blah. And uh, then I get attacked by Thomson Reuters. They're fact checkers and they yeah. write me this nasty gram and you know justify what you've said and where's the data and this kind of stuff and they cite a comment they get the mhra which is the, F, the version of the fda in the uk yeah. to make comments and i'm like okay i've seen this rodeo before of course where are we going to do this time so you can go on that website that i just said yeah rw loan md look at the tab for children right and you will find a massive amount of data about the risks to children and make your own decision. Right. You know, that's the rule. Because so I'm not going to tell you what to think. You can do your own thinking. I just want to give you the information. And, you, and the information speaks for itself. And we have to basically run a guerrilla campaign mm -hmm. because we are up against Goliath. It's yeah. a metaphor mm -hmm. that people talk about right, all the right. time. Of course. We've got to be the Davids. Yeah, we have to be. And to be David, you have to be smart. Right. And you have to be agile. And, and if we can help people, I mean, if, if whatever our cost is, if we can help catalyze a new renaissance where people start thinking for themselves, I can... I can die happy. Right. That's I'm really glad that you guys are, are in the fight. Yeah. We're glad to have you, brother. I hate I hate using the term fight. Right, right. But it is. You know, it's it is guerrilla full on twenty first century modern media yep, yep. and political warfare. Yeah, whatever is going on, there's a I think there's more money being made now in this war than in this than in real war, than in physical war. I think there's a lot more money moving hands. It's globally. Yeah. It's We've never had that. It is massive, yep. and it's not just the profit, it's also the market cap. You gotta watch to Crazy. follow these characters. You gotta not just look at how much money they're making yep. on the profit, yeah, yeah. but how the value is going up. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about the whole depopulation agenda? So, okay, that's pretty heavy. What I've learned is that there are multiple documents in video clips of these influential players like Bill Gates and members of Klaus Schwab and the members of the World right. Economic mm -hmm. Forum that, that speak very openly about the need to reduce the human population. Um, so it's not hidden. Right. Um, uh, so, so I have to believe that they were sincere and they really meant that. They were just like drunk or something, right? right? Um, that they really meant They're it. They're like obsessed with that yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so they they have come to believe that it's in their interest. And there's there's other little quotes, you know. Apparently, Henry Kissinger said stuff like this, who was the mentor of Klaus Schwab. Okay, so it's now it's multi generational. Yeah, and it may be that they're doing things for other reasons. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, but they've said this is their intention. Mm -hmm. Right. And you see, this is their actions. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, some, and yeah. and so you Long know, draw your own conclusion right, right. about point A to point B. Right, right. But uh, on, that, on that topic, you would know. 
uh, Jimmy and I wouldn't know this. Um, what, wh where does the truth end and start as far as whether it's vaccines in general, this vaccine, as far as something that might be dormant in you, this might awaken it. Is there any truth in that, that this MR, mRNA specifically or this vaccine? So or absolutely. This is one of the vaccine? adverse events that nobody talks about. And I don't know about the something that might be awakened question. Right. Okay. But I do know that one of the known adverse events that is never discussed, I mean, there's a number of these that are out there that there's huge amounts of data supporting, but CDC never talks about. One of those is reactivation of latent DNA viruses. Mm -hmm. The one that everybody knows about, because you can't pretend not to recognize, is the reactivation of shingles. Okay? Shingles hurts. Okay. I've had it. I've had shingles. It's wicked. Uh -huh. um, okay. So that's a, a latent DNA virus that's hiding in your nerves mm -hmm. that for some reason, post-vaccination, in a fraction of people, comes out and you get the disease. Right. Now, it's not just the shingles virus. It's herpes viruses, it's Epstein mm -hmm. Barr virus, it's cytomegalovirus, yeah. it's a bunch of these latent DNA viruses. Um, so, does something come out after the jab? Yeah, these, the D these DNA viruses yeah. for sure. We know in laboratory studies that there are alterations in T cell signal function, toll like receptor expression display. Mm -hmm. Something's going on with the T cell, it's not clear how long it lasts. Right. Okay. Um, and because because if you're having these DNA viruses jump out, it's because the thing that's been keeping the lid on the box has been released, okay? And then you have this laboratory data, and then down this particular rabbit hole, there's um, the, the emerging anecdotal data having to do with cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and a number of pathologists saying in oncologists, people that study cancer and treat cancer, um, saying, we think we're seeing unusual cancer, it's unusually aggressive, coming up in people that shouldn't be getting it at times in their life when they shouldn't be having it. Okay, so now we're seeing, you know, multiple points along the line that's saying, uh, this isn't so good. Right. Mm -hmm. So, in, you know, in response to the question, is there stuff that's coming out after the jab? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. How bad is it? How frequent is it? Um, we'll know in the next five to ten years, right? Um, right? That's yeah, the crazy. And so, why does back? Why do vaccines normally take ten years to come to licensure? Because after you finish the big phase three study, which, by the way, they only let run for a few months, right. and then they closed it down and jabbed everybody, so they killed the controls, so we could never find those long-term adverse events, right? That's all in this slide deck. This is what caused Twitter to. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. That's pr produced by the Canadian COVID Care Alliance. Okay? Mm -hmm. Fantastic video. Yeah. Um, all true. Um, but, you know, normally we run the phase three trials and then we have a period of two, sometimes three years where you follow people for autoimmune disease and other effects. Yeah. And, and for whatever reason, our government decided to blow all that off. Mm -hmm. So, in my mind, part of the problem here, the reason why we're having all this arguing about the data, you know, what is, what is the real problem? What do the real data say? Oh, no, I don't believe in bears. Oh, I believe in bears this time, but not that time, right. and all that stuff, all that noise. It's because the government didn't do its job. Yes. Because they didn't force the, the vaccine companies to, to do what they yeah, are normally required to do, mm -hmm. right? right? They gave them a pass. Yeah. Right. And that, that's a whole nother rabbit hole why they do that. Everyone's asking crazy things. They're like, what's going on with this? CIA, this, F, that. And someone's like, ask Dr. Rob Malone, how does he like his steak cooked? <laughs> yeah. So we're vegetarians. We've been okay. vegetarians for a long time. How so long? No steak. How long? It's 20, 30 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Before it became a trend. Yeah. Um, my wife likes to count the number of animals that we've saved. That's cool. Um, we did a lot of animal research when, when we were younger and ran a laboratory. I like to say that if mice control the pearly gates, I'm toast. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so, you know, I, we just think it's the right way to be. Absolutely, um, yeah, to, I respect To kind it. of have a, a low profile, low impact on the world. I respect world. it, 100%.
Yeah. And also, when you when you eat um, an animal, people don't acknowledge like if the cow was sad, stressed, or whatever. depressed, stressed, you actually you absorb that, that energy. Right. People don't think about those things. They're just eating good food, but then later on, they're depressed. Two weeks later, wondering where it came still from. Still in your body, yeah, right. And it actually was the energy. I'm still gonna eat meat. I'll take my chances. Okay. Yeah, we don't we don't like try to put our our feelings about this and everybody right, else. Right. We're just like, you know, it's your choice. You're real vegans. You're not 2020 vegans. Well, we're not vegans even, right? I, I'm eating egg. Right, right. Um, vegetarian. Uh, we Do you have, eat fish? No, we're so not. So just vegetarian. Yeah. yeah. Just vegetarian. Fish live. Right, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Nothing that, okay. But, yeah, so we don't do steak. If you were to tell someone who has been injured from the shot one thing, what would it be? I think... It's really important to have an open heart and to be kind. Um, I'm a doc. That's what I was trained in, right? But we can all we can all be therapists, right? Um, by uh, this gets to the core point, in my opinion, the three ways we get out of this, not to be a total downer, is we got to restore integrity across the board. You know, the noble lie is just a lie. Let's yeah. stop it, right? Be honest with each other. Insist on honesty in our in our, in our politics and in our organizations. Restore human dignity. You know, I don't care. I I was a carpenter and a farmhand before I came a physician and a mm -hmm. scientist, and I'm not a bad not bad at shooting horses either. There's no difference between me and my farrier or the guy that weed whips. Mm -hmm. He's my friend. We're, I've, I've had to do his job in the past. We should treat, all, all of us should treat each other with dignity. Right. And the third one is community. That's the real sickness is we've lost our bonds to each other. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why the mass formation happened. Yep. Yep. And, and we have to find ways to come back together. And we're not going to get to community if we're busy saying, oh, I'm not going to talk to the vaccinated. Right. Or I'm not going to talk to the unvaccinated. Right. Or I hate um, Democrats. Mm -hmm. Or I blah, 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 all this hate and division and all that. Right. You know what it's really good for? It's really good for the bloody press. Yeah. Right? It, it, they love it. Yep. That is how they sell clicks. Don't play into their game. So... For the vaccine injured person, um, I think the starting point is to listen. Because a lot of times, when this is an easy thing that you can do to help people, is a lot of people that have had trauma, and I speak from experience. Um, remember, my part of my origin story is I had a nervous breakdown and had post traumatic stress disorder after these inventions in my eight, you know, in the 1980s, a young man. Um, you know, 28. I'm old. I don't even have to tell yeah, you. I'm 28. Old. Yeah. So when I was your age, yeah, um, I came unglued with all the stuff that happened to me at the salt. You can help people by listening to them and letting them tell their story. Right. And um, and I think that that has to do with this dignity thing. It also has to do with community. And I, and I think that's the starting point. Is if somebody's vaccine injured, they what I hear again and again is they feel like they are not allowed to be part of society. Crazy. They can't tell their story. Mm -hmm. yep. They're subject to all kinds of harassment and, and demeaned, mm -hmm. um, especially children. Um, they're bullied. Yep. Um, and, uh, and, and I think they, anybody that's been damaged has to be approached with an open heart right. and just try to... Do what you can to heal them. And the starting point is listen to them. Right. Don't act like what they're saying is a lie. Mm -hmm. That's, for me, this hit me right after that Dark Horse podcast. I had all these people calling me. And and um, and they wanted to tell me their story. And, and it was heartbreaking. And they had been, they had had groups on Facebook. Yeah. Where they were telling each other yeah, their yeah, story. Yeah. And then they all got deleted. They removed it. Yep. Nope. They all got deleted, and it was like the worst form of gaslighting. Right. Right. You don't matter to us. Yeah. Right. Not only have you been damaged. Yeah. But you're so unimportant that we're just going to flush you. Yeah. Right. Right. And so that's that's what I would start with. 
And um, a lot of people were saying, you know, why did he give every so very one dimensional people on both sides, regardless? It's always if you're this, then you're this. If you're that, then you're that. And if you do this, then you're this, you know, whatever it is. So they assume, you know, they said, why is he vaccinated? And they make all these assumptions. I know why you're vaccinated because I've watched many of your videos. But for anyone who might have missed it because they like to clip it and, you know, they like to make you a certain way. Why are you? Yeah. So the <coughs> one of the things that's fascinating about that question, why did you get the vaccine? Yeah. Is the subtext that I am somehow controlled opposition. Correct. <laughs> um, and... Uh, and that's one of the silver linings of being kicked off of Twitter and of LinkedIn, is that kind of puts a hole in that Correct. theory. Like, right. Wait a this is, this right. is a really in-depth chess game. Yeah, uh, yeah. So um, that so, and in a way, it's a little offensive. Of course. Uh, because people are saying, "Well, I have the right to know your medical information." Right. But this is kind of one of the price. I mean, you guys deal with this. Yeah, You're course. public figures. Yes. Right, so you get all kinds of crazy coming at you. We get the same thing, and you got to kind of just not, go with it, right? Up, yeah. yeah, you got to go with it, yeah. and and you got to own it, and and I think again, have an open heart, right, and say, okay, this is a little wacky, but you know, the the problem problem with that question is a lot of times it's concern trolling. Yeah, there are people that are playing the concern trolling. Of game. course, yeah. but let's go with it. Yeah. So why do you do it? Jill and I were scheduled to speak in uh, France. Yeah, right. Um, and uh, that was coming up to talk about the origin story of the RNA vaccines yeah, yeah, yeah. is what we were going to talk about. Okay. So we were going to go to France. We knew we had to go to Portugal because we go to Portugal all the time because we breed this Portuguese horse, the Lusitana. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a bunch of buddies there. Right. And, and I knew that it was likely that I was going to have to do a fair amount of international travel. And looking ahead, I could tell that if you weren't jabbed and you wanted to get on an international jet plane, good it luck. was going to be wicked hard. Yeah, good luck. Um, I also had long COVID because I'd been infected right. at the end of February 2020. And that one was hard. I mean, I thought I was going to die. Right. That's how I discovered famotidine is we had this list of drugs mm -hmm. that we'd identified using the computer. And I just, I was like, I'm going to die. Right. So what do I have to lose? Uh, so I started taking the ones that we'd identified, and and Pepsi worked. Pepsi, um, yeah. right? And so voila. But but that still wasn't enough. I mean, the modern protocols use a lot of different things like ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, and, right. and you know many other agents and and steroids. But none of that was known. Yeah. So it hit me hard. I mean, I had the full night sweats, soaking the bed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Couldn't hardly walk up the hill without having the rest. Bad. Um, and I got these long-term symptoms. And there was a whole storyline put out in the press. And I, I think this was nefarious. I don't think this was, this was legitimate. Yeah. But that people that had been infected should go ahead and get jabbed. And that it would help with their long COVID. This is a time in which of course, most of the press was denying that long COVID early. even existed. Very early. Right? And so, so I was like, okay, maybe this will help. I'm still not well. Um, uh, and I could kind of make up a story where it might help. Right. Um, immunologically. So I said, okay, this is plausible. People are reporting this. I feel like hell. Um, and I'm going to have to travel anyhow. Um, and it, the vaccine had, not in our part of Virginia, you know, it, it, it's a little... It's a small county, right, right. <laughs> okay? We're a little backwater. Um, and uh, so, so the National Guard came in and we were given notification that they were gonna have these clinics and we could sign up for it and all that kind of stuff. So Jill and I did. And it, you only got one choice. There right. was one jab you could take, and in our case yeah, it yeah. was Moderna. Right. Okay, which is the three times the dose of Pfizer, um, less adverse events than J&J. &J. Mm -hmm. So we took the, the um, Moderna for those reasons. We had to travel. I had long COVID. Mm -hmm. um, after the second jab, my blood pressure spiked up to 230. Thank God I had a cardiologist that was on top of things. Yeah. And I went in. I mean, I knew my, I was pounding. I knew I felt awful. Right. I knew I was having headaches. You don't even need steak. And she put the cuff on me, and she's like, Robert you got a problem here. 
Yeah. Um, and uh, you got to, this is an emergency, and you've got to treat it like an emergency. Yeah, and of course. here's the drugs you're going to take. You right. better start taking them right away. Get a blood pressure cuff, monitor it, bang, 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 yeah. bang, bang. And we got her on it. I mean, Jill was on me. Right, right. <laughs> and, and thank God. Um, and uh, so, and I had many other side effects. Right. Like, um, narcolepsy, POTS like syndromes, yeah. restless leg syndrome. I mean, these are all known at the time. These side effects weren't really known. And I was on top of all the data. I hadn't heard about a lot of this stuff. Yeah. And then it came out over time, and I'm like, oh, you know. And, and what's kind of an interesting backstory, if you think about that now in retrospect, is the literature is clear that people that have developed natural immunity from prior infection have yes. a much higher risk of adverse events if they take the jab. Right. Which is why this, in my opinion, this whole everybody needs to take the jab whether or not you have natural immunity yeah. or not, even, even if natural immunity is only as good as the vaccine, right. and there's like 140 publications that shows that it's better, right? right? Who cares, yeah. right? Um, it's not in the financial interest of Pfizer, of course. Mm -hmm. whatever the reason is, okay? They all want us to take we the jab, why. whether we've been infected right. or not in the past, and they never talk about the fact of the literature that shows that the adverse event profile is way worse if you've already been infected. Right. And here's the thing, this gets back to the kids and the whole mission of the Unity Project yep. that I serve as medical director and regulatory director right. for, okay? Chief Medical and Scientific Officer for the Unity Project. The Unity Project, you know, www.unityprojectonline.com, California-based group, grown out of an activist women's group, really mothers, that came together. Right. When Gavin Newsom said he was going to force know. universal jab. That was nuts. And, and these moms, you know, I've been saying all along, you know what's going to change the midterm election? It's going to be pissed off moms. Mom, pissed off moms. <laughs> okay. It's going to change the world. It's going to change the future of the world. It's yeah. going to be pissed off moms. Right. You know, uh, they are the swing yeah, cohort. Correct. Yeah. Um, and so these pissed off moms right. who, who are like, you know, mama bears, right? These, right. All these stereotypes. No, you're not going to do this to right. my kids. Right. They came together and that eventually led to this entity, the Unity Project. And then they called me and said, would you join us? So, so they've got all this data and information right. and go online and see it. And it's not just the jabs, the stuff that has happened with children, with the mask use and the lockdowns and the school disruption. Yep, yep. You know, there's data suggesting a 20 point IQ drop. I believe it. Um, and developmental delays. I mean, what we have done to our children for is generations. profound, profound damage. Right. But here's the, the really sick, sad thing. You know, you had this guy who's the editor in chief of the New England Journal of Medicine. You know, um, he sits on the Verbag, the Vaccine um, Advisory yeah. Regulatory Board for the FDA. And he's sitting there in the meeting where they're making a decision about whether or not to go ahead and authorize the jabs for kids. Right. And he makes this comment, well, we don't really have the data about safety, but we're never going to find out unless we start vaccinating. I'm mm -hmm. like, my head blows up. I saw that. Okay. Um, you know, I'm trained in clinical research. Right. The answer is, oh, you don't. Right. right. <laughs> okay. You first do a careful study right. in kids that are at high risk for the disease, and you make sure it's safe in them because they have a higher risk ratio. Okay, you start with those kids, make sure it's safe. Then you do a very careful study in, in like, you know, 12 to 18 year olds, and they make sure it's safe in them. And then you do it for the younger ones, right. and make sure it's safe in them. And then you do it with the neonates um, in, in young children you know, like up to five, right. and then you say if it's safe in them, and then you go ahead and make a go, no, Before go decision, you, right. not a, well, we don't know, and so we're just going to jab yeah, them. I mean, it, my mind blew up, up right. when well, right. I heard that. That is so sick. Yeah. Okay. Wouldn't that eliminate a whole control group if everyone in the whole world got vaccinated at the same time? It, we would, that's the exact opposite we would of what never, science is. We would never be able to assess the true risk benefit, right. yeah. which means they're adverse event profile, their risks are probably even higher. Right. Their risk, you're right, the risk is tiny for yeah. the virus, but their risk for the for reaction the of the jab right. is way higher than the regular pediatric population, right. which they're not studying those kids. And it's probably the majority of the kids in the United States. 
Now, that's why I say, you know, as I said on Brett Weinstein, trying to be nice, it's knocking fucks. Yeah, yeah. It is just... I'll say it for you, it's fucking nuts. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's just wrong. Unreal. I have a general question. Um, probably one more question each, we'll wrap it up. But um, I know we have, like in general, we have like levels of higher viral loads, lower viral loads. We have a way to kind of measure, you know, that barometer. Do we have that level for efficacy of antibodies yet? As far as high end, you know, you have a lot, you have a little. So that's a good question. And there's a couple, so I'm going to unpick that a little bit because that's a techie, sciencey question. Um, the, the short answer is no. Um, when they measure antibodies in total antibody titers, antibodies are like a swarm of bees, but it's a kind of special swarm. Only a few of those bees are actually loaded and ready for action, okay? So uh, only a few of those bees in that swarm are armed and loaded and able to knock out the virus. But, um, and it's a minor subset typically, but when you measure antibody levels that are reactive against the virus, you're measuring the whole swarm. Okay, so first off, the whole idea that you could use elitis of titers as an indication of whether or not somebody is protected by antibodies right. is demonstrably false. It's immunologic gibberish. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, the, with viruses, um, like this, that can spread from cell to cell. They don't have to jump out of the cell to infect the other cell. They go, they tunnel through. Right. Okay. The things that knocks them out is at the at the forefront of the infection is your T cell response, mm -hmm. your cellular immune response, which is not being measured by those antibody tests. Of so that's more immunologic gibberish. Right. Okay. It's irrelevant. And then, then you got the problem that most of us, pretty much all of us, have already encountered the beta coronaviruses, that's more techie talk. Mm -hmm. um, there, there is related coronaviruses that we have all had course, that yeah, are cold, cold coronaviruses, right. you know, the, the, common cold. the common cold, right? And those antibodies cross react, okay? So even more immunologic gibberish. So the answer is what, what you really, if I can translate what you just said into regulatory talk, the question you're answering, and it's a profound question, is there a proven correlative protection based on antibodies for SARS-CoV-2? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. Okay, so, and it is wicked hard to demonstrate a correlative protection. It's not been done for this one. Yeah. So, um, and, and it's often really hard to get a correlative protection for any virus because the protection that you have as somebody who's been infected and developed natural immunity, as I have, which may or may not be completely protective against Omicron, right. probably not. Some of us that have natural immunity are gonna get infected with Omicron. Right. Everybody, this is another one that everybody hits me with. Peter McCullough said that it's one and done, okay? Peter McCullough said that before Omicron. Right, right. And, and he actually, Peter McCullough called me before I went on to Brett, and uh, the, I'm sorry, on to the Rogan Joe, show. Right. And he said, Robert, you can you do me? this? Clear it up for me. Because <laughs> I blew We're both it. Getting it. <laughs> right? And, and so I did. Um, so Omicron slips through those antibodies pretty good. Where does that end? I, you know more than me. I know it's an open ended statement. You know, where does this specifically end in regards to that? Yeah, so that's the kind of the good news uh, Christmas package right. story. The Omicron. Is, yeah. is Omicron looks like it's extremely infectious. Um, readily transmitted, infects a different part of your body, right. the upper airway, not the yeah, lungs, yeah. more. It's the deep lung virus infections right. that, that can kill people. you. Um, this is known with influenza. And what it will do is generate what we call mucosal immune response. Um, this is actually, Jill and I had a, a fundamental patent on vaccines to produce uh, mucosal immune responses, just the two of us, years ago. Um, so Omicron is going to generate mucosal immune responses. It's going to affect most everybody. There's some data suggesting that, um, and there's you got to be really careful interpreting it. Of course. Um, that vaccines may actually make it more likely that you get Omicron infection. Right. Um, it's going to move through all, all of us. The world. Yep. 
And um, we're all going to generate good, robust immunity. And hopefully that immunity is broad and protective enough so that we finally start to get to herd immunity. Right. And it's important to understand herd immunity is not like a binary thing. You have it or you don't have it. Right. Okay. It's, it's something that you approach gradually. Mm -hmm. This is the level of herd immunity, which is, herd, what does herd immunity mean? People don't, like, they toss this word around. Yeah. Like Tony was like, early on, oh, 70% and we're going to reach herd immunity. Right. Uh, it's important to recognize that Tony Fauci is not an epidemiologist. Okay. He's not trained in public health. He tosses these words around, but he doesn't seem to really understand what they mean. What it means is that if you get infected in a, an environment in which we've reached herd immunity, and by the way, herd immunity is a local thing. Right. Okay. Um, if you get infected on average, you will infect less than one other person. You know, if there's 10 of you on average, those 10 will infect less than one person. And what happens when you reach that point is the virus dies out. It can't continue to feed on us, right? right? We're its food. It's a parasite. Right. Okay. And so that's what herd immunity is. So it's got, it's got a number. You can, you can plot that number and it'll kind of move like that as it gets close to that R naught of one. So that's what we got to look for. And yeah. don't expect that the light switch is going to go on of course. and we're all going to be safe. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, even though that's kind of how it's been sold to us, not the way it works. Yeah. Here's, if you, it, so you, you in on this, I'm going to t share the, the, the next level of understanding. Why does a lot of these viruses infect the kids like measles and yeah. In a natural environment, globally, what you see is these pediatric viruses circle the globe. And what they're doing is that a, a population reaches herd immunity and the virus stops circulating. And then you have kids start getting born until you get enough kids that the virus can spread. Mm -hmm. The virus is hiding. Remember, this virus lives in deer and cats and all kinds of stuff. We're not going to get rid of this. Right. It's with us for the rest of our lives right. and beyond. Um, so it'll come back in the human population. And once you get enough kids born that haven't ex been exposed to the virus, then it'll take off again and it'll infect those kids. And that's why you see the circulating pediatric infectious disease. Right. Makes sense? Yeah, yeah, makes yeah. sense. Cool. Okay, because that's, sense. I'm really proud that I can. I no, can that makes, that convey makes... that because that's an advanced topic in epidemiology to kind of get that part. Absolutely. Um, so cool. So, so, you know, don't jab the kids. Don't force yeah. the kids to get jabbed. Yeah, I know you're, you're big on that. How can, we, how can we get involved specifically? So thanks. Yeah. So remember when we were talking about mass formation? Yes, of course. Okay. And remember I laid the, the guilt trip on you. Yeah. That like it got laid on me by Matias Desk right. the other day. Okay. Um, you're in the battle and you can't back out. I mean, you could wean you out. Right. Um, and, you know, just chill, do your thing. Yeah. But if you're willing to accept responsibility for the human race right. and for a fellow man, um, you're in the battle. And it's not about left or right, right. Or Democrat or Republican right. or black or white or mm -hmm. Latino, vaccinated or all vaccinated. vaccinated or unvaccinated. Right. It's not about the vaccines. Yeah. It's about the mandates. Correct. Okay. So whether you're pro-vaccination or anti-vaccination, you know, you want to wear a mask or you don't want to wear a right. mask. I like that. I love that. Bar. Appreciate you coming out. I don't know how you found my house. <laughs> hey, I, I really, well, I know about this character um, from coming out to Oahu and Maui. Right. That was awesome. Right. So, yeah. Great to meet you. And um, thanks for having me here and for the chance just to shoot the shit. Absolutely. Let's do it again. I'm glad you cursed this time. <laughs> <laughs>